I'm not the only person on screen right now who's been falsely accused of a terrible sex act. You were accused of something that you did not do. And so you know what this feels like. You know the pain it can bring to your family. And you know how it just puts people on defense when you're accused of something so salacious and awful. You just referred to a mentally ill viewer who accused me of a sex crime 20 years ago. Um, and it, of course, it was it was not true. I never met the person. Um, but but I, I do agree with you that being accused falsely is one of the worst things that can happen. American Gods right. is fucking done. Did I mention that last week? Well, we were done with American Gods. <laughs> well, I've been watching it still. Well, you're you're better than me. I have been thinking, you know, is it really worth subscribing to Stars right now? Is it? And well, the answer to that, just... the answer to subscribing subscribing to Stars is always eh, no. But you know. <laughs> The, the third season was uh, not bad, better than the second, but it's done for, and maybe they're going to do a wrap-up movie. Who the hell knows? But yeah, so there you go. American Gods, fucking donezo. Okay, well, at, uh, so it basically lasted about the same number of seasons as uh, Netflix's Glow, so... There you go, yeah. But- yeah, but this time they don't even have to climb a pandemic, so... Yeah, by the way, this is TV Tan Podcast, episode 0361, I believe, could be. That's right, three, 361 episodes where you get to listen to TV news, listen to some great reviews, and oh yes, we've got lots of booze that is provided to you lovingly by me, Tommy Milagro. And me, Bill Frost, and uh, sucking on a little uh, straight-up vodka on the rocks, because that's that's the way to do it. No muss, because no fuss. Because Jesus. Yes. Oh, yeah, it, yeah is, but- it is Easter. We are recording on Easter, which is uh, weird in and of itself. Well, actually, for us, it's pretty apropos, because we are, you know, atheistic heathens. Therefore, it just makes sense to record on a day like today. Now, whereas you, Mr. Frost, are enjoying some lovely uh, vodka on the rocks, unfortunately, the uh, the booze train skipped me again. <laughs> uh, but that's okay because I am enjoying some uh, uh, some uh, libations of my own. In fact, if you were to go to our good friends at Sugar House Distillery, not only are you going to find some great uh, booze there, but you'll also get. From Cafe Ibis uh, Coffee Roasting Company, not a sponsor, you will get uh, a chance to have some bourbon barrel for, uh, coffee beans from Peru. Oh, man, that's all kinds of fancy. Oh, and this is how fancy as fuck I'm getting here. I am doing this as a cold brew uh, with an ice cube because wow. fancy as fuck. <laughs> and... Uh, as you could tell uh, from my uh, Kermit the Frog uh, nanny cam, I am having my pinky out because Jesus. All right, yeah. And uh, speaking of things coming back from the dead, uh, the walk- <laughs> the uh, the Walking Dead uh, got a little. New- I don't how how recent is this? Let me see. Uh, well, this just dropped today. The Walking Dead's final season will uh, begin, that will be season 11, it will begin on uh, August uh, 22nd, a Sunday, of course, and the yeah. uh, the final season will be 24 episodes, but uh, you're only going to get the first eight in August, uh, Running, I guess that would run through August and into September, into October, probably, and then the other 16 episodes, uh, you'll see them when you see them. Now, I, I was reading this this morning from the uh, Daily Mail, Cheerio Bitches, <laughs> and Jeffrey Dean Morgan was saying there was supposed to be an episode 12, but then everybody kind of got uh, uh, caught se- off guard by uh, AMC. Uh, yeah, they were expecting a season 12, and uh, they said, no, nah, no, nah, you're done. But really, <laughs> a 24-episode season is pretty much like uh that's almost another season really Mm -hmm. so quit quit your complaining jeffrey dean morgan 
Well, he's got reason to complain. The Negan always needs to complain. <laughs> Maybe he can be part of the Carol and Daryl thing, if he survives. Uh, you're putting way too much emphasis in the pronunciation. You mean the Curl and Daryl? Curl and Daryl, uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, mostly I'd like to see Jeffrey Dean Morgan bring back that show he did from his ranch during the early days of the pandemic. What was that called again? I'm trying to remember. It was... Uh... Uh, at home with the Morgans or something like that. that. Yeah, that sounds about right. That that sounds about uh, stay, accurate. Staying there. the fuck inside with the Morgans. That was the <laughs> uh, the the early uh, the early days of the pandemic where no one wanted to go outside, and then eventually mm-hmm. that wore off. Except for me, I, I stayed inside. Well, to be fair, when have you ever gone outside if not for a gig? <laughs> Well, you know, I do like get out there on the bike once in a while. Got to, got to cruise the neighborhood. Yes, and you got to get that sun, that vitamin D, to really ward off all the uh, the maladies that can yeah, happen. Yeah, I know. I know a lot of people like to bike in the mountains and outside, out up up on the trails and everything. But I like to do it urban style because I find it's more of a challenge when every car out there is trying to kill you actively. <laughs> So basically, you're doing the uh, the jackrabbit uh, uh, exercise. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Dodge. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> and uh, got some, got some. We should have mentioned this one last week, but there's still time. Shows, shows, shows never go away. Mm-hmm. Uh, the new series Bird Girl, the spinoff of Harvey Birdman, Attorney at Law, uh, premiering oh. premiering as we're speaking. It is. Uh, Paget Brewster from Criminal Minds is the voice of Bird Girl, the daughter of Harvey Birdman. She is now uh, taking over, taking over his place, mm-hmm. and uh, she's taking up the mantle, as it were. Yeah, Judy Ken, Judy Ken Seven inherits her father's company, <laughs> and uh, of course, they're into all sorts of things like clearing redwood forests and operating for-profit children's hospitals. And she would like, she would like to uh, turn things around. To uh, make make the uh, the firm less terrible. Now, is there going to be any cameos from Stephen Colbert, the voice of Phil Ken? I certain, I surely doubt that. I don't think they can afford him. Ah, <laughs> not enough money. Here, uh, here's what they do have, though. They have a uh, Rob Delaney from Catastrophe, uh, Kether Donahue from You're the Worst, uh, Nagin Fursad uh, of the uh, the Muslims are coming. And uh, the mm-hmm. Fake the Nation podcast, and uh, a, a few other people, and ha- happy to, happy to see some animation, some old school Adult Swim animation come back. Fun fact: Nagin Fursad was in Salt Lake City once upon a time, and she and Dean Obadalo from uh, CNN did a comedy show in Utah. I was in attendance that day. And uh, what was it about? Uh, well, the Muslims are coming. Okay, naturally. cool. <laughs> kind of says that they're right in the title. Yeah, I think that was before I knew who she was because i i didn't I didn't really get hip to her until uh, her podcast. So yeah, I got to catch up. Get this. What? What's Here, that? Uh, Chad, a new series from uh, Nassim Pedrad from Saturday Night Live and New Girl and various other things. Uh, she plays a 14 year old, uh, Persian boy. Like <laughs> this is uh yeah. So this is like kind of a twist on pen 15 really. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like basically being a, being a 14 year old in high school and also being, uh, a, a Persian young Persian boy. And Wait. <coughs> this was, um, this was originally developed for Fox way back in 2016 and they did nothing with it. Is this the part where I should be surprised by that? Uh, if you want me to, I'll, I'll play it up. Here. Yeah, apparently Fox blew it back then. Okay, I'll but, play it up here. But, but, oh my stars and garters! This is what happens when you do not allow... Me- okay, that's about as much as I can muster. Yeah, you did you, anyway. you did what you could with it. So this looks pretty damn funny, actually. <clears throat> and uh, Yeah, well, yeah, I, I, I've seen some... Uh, some snippets of it on uh, TBS and yeah, it, it's definitely, it's very cringe comedy. So it's <laughs> definitely got a lot of Ricky Gervais feel, but it has uh what's that word that doesn't uh, associate it with Gervais? Um, warmth. That's it. <laughs> yeah. 
Got a little bit of that, yeah. And okay. uh, on Wednesday, I'd, I'd totally forgotten this was on the way because I keep getting this mixed up with the uh, Shang-Chi uh, movie. Is it a movie or a series, Disney Plus? I can't remember from Marvel. but uh, I think it's going to be a series. Going to be a series, okay. Uh, this is uh, Kung Fu, a reboot of the 70s David Carradine series. Okay. Coming up on Wednesday on The CW. Now, uh, first obvious question, will there be Asians? Yes, there will be actual, okay. this is uh, populated and starring actual Asians. Uh, the the main the main character here is a uh, is a woman Olivia Lang uh, plays a Chinese American woman who heads to China to train in the martial arts and then returns home to use her new skills to fight crime in the Bay Area. Second question: On a scale of one to Warrior, where does this rank? Uh, I don't. There's no way this can compare to Warrior, but it's it might be entertaining at least. Uh, yeah, I it, and I will say. If you've seen Warrior on HBO Max, and if you have not, you should, but if you have seen Warrior, I think all other martial arts, TV series, and movies might be spoiled forever for you. Mm -hmm. So you might want to save that one till you know, you've run out of all other martial arts, TV shows, and movies. To me, I would just say, uh, uh, take uh, Carradine out of the picture, uh, don't choke on your aspirations. Oh, too soon. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, at the very least, Kung Fu sounds like it's at least a step above Iron Fist. Yeah, we'll I see. Think it, we'll see. Yeah. yeah. And also, we on Wednesday there's a premiere. Uh, this this just reeks of a uh, a comedy. We had somebody had lying around said, "Oh yeah, we need something. Let's put that on." Uh, home Home Economics starring uh, Topher Grace. Remember him? That 70s uh, show? Yeah. Yeah. But here's the thing. He was always, uh, uh, compared to him and, uh, oh, what, what's the redhead's name? Um, um, uh, those two were always the talented ones from that 70s show. Yeah, true. And, and But then, uh, what's, his, what's his name? Fez? Uh, <laughs> Wilmer Valderrama? Yeah. Yeah, homeboy snuck up out of nowhere. That was our dark horse favorite. Yeah, this show looks but, this show looks terrible. It's called Home, Home Economics, and uh, Topher Grace, Jimmy Tatro, and Caitlin McGee stars three adult siblings who find themselves in different economic classes. One's one's just fucking rich. The other one's barely hanging on, and another is middle class. And uh, yeah, looks terrible. But it does have a uh, Sashir Zamata in here, so it's not all bad. Uh, yeah, um, I'm just gonna say, watch softer. Yeah, hash brown watch watch softer. Yeah. Also on Wednesday is the uh, fifth and final season premiere of Queen of the South. This has been off for a minute. Ooh. Alicia Braga, she's uh, coming up to be her own uh, her own drug lord. And is all this gonna finally lead up to uh, when she gets finally assassinated? And we go, oh, so that's how it happens here. Yeah. Yeah, you keep forgetting that's how the uh, the series started, and it's mm-hmm. been kind of telling the story backwards here. I I will say it's definitely got a good uh, Scarface feel, but at the same time, it's it's its own animal. It's its own uh, uh, telenovela for Americans. Yeah, um, and Alicia Braga has definitely brought it every single episode every time yeah so that's on uh wednesday on usa and uh have you ever heard of or seen or know anything about a uh, a former cbs all access now paramount plus series called no activity uh starring tim meadows no and should i uh it's it's mildly funny it's uh it's a funnier i believe it's a funnier die production and uh, uh, the, okay. the first uh, season four premieres on Thursday on Paramount Plus. The first three seasons were live action. Now, all suddenly, now this season, it's animated. Probably because, can I just safely say, COVID and uh, safe distancing? Yeah, but everybody else is getting their shows together. Why? Why? Mm. And not only is it animated, it's very badly animated. <laughs> it's like computer generated garbage. Oh, that okay. 
Yeah, it basically but, uh, it basically looks like oh fuck, what are we gonna do? <laughs> we got- yeah, but uh, here's what I'm gonna say: when whenever you say badly animated, I uh, I always use twelve ounce mouse as the epitome. No, twelve of ounce animation. Twelve ounce mouse is genius compared to this animation. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, this looks like one of those Chinese reenactment videos from uh, Chinese news stations. Stop Asian hate there, Mr. I'm just saying Bill Frost. I'm not that's what, not what we're doing here. <laughs> <laughs> you know someone's gonna do that. You're 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 uh you're uh stereotyping against Asian Americans. No, we're just saying that somewhere in the outskirts of between Wuhan and Wu Tang, somebody is fucking up on CGI. Yeah. That's it. Uh, here's here's a good one. Uh, apparently, Amazon Prime Video is launching their own kind of a American Horror Story style anthology series. Uh, this one is called Them. It's from Lena Waithe and uh, a writer uh, named Little Marvin. I'm not familiar with Little. him, but that's it's, okay. a, it's, it's a great name. And uh, basically, it, it's it's Black American Horror Story is what it is. Uh, each season will uh, encompass one story. The first one is uh, subtitled Covenant, uh, about an Afri- African-American family who moved to North Carolina to an all-white and apparently haunted L.A. neighborhood in 1953. Uh, for Just so I'm aware, is Jordan Peele involved in this? No. Okay, I'm already suspecting this is going to fail. Uh, <laughs> I, but it, it's not that, it's not from a lack of trying. It's the fact that We've had great horror stories already in uh, Get Out, uh, yeah. Us, yeah. uh, Lovecraft Country, yes. which, oh, by the way, if anybody hasn't figured out the theme, it's Jordan fucking Peel, the Wes Craven of fucking <laughs> African-American horror. Well, let me, let me dig a little further here, see if there's any Jordan Peel action here. Okay. Uh, but, but... No. Okay, um, but uh, the trailer uh, looks great. I think it's gonna I think it's gonna work. Okay, all right. Well, uh, so uh, who is the who is the antithesis to Wes Craven? Oh yeah. So whoever's involved is this like the Jim Carpenter of uh, John Carpenter? Uh, African, John Carpenter. What did I say? Jim Carpenter. G- Jim what Carpenter. Was? Jim Carpenter is his brother who runs a weed farm. <laughs> <laughs> That means the genius juice is working. A little G- oh. little Jim Belushi humor for you there. Oh. <laughs> that, w- that, that's a sentence that never goes together. You know that. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so uh, it looks pretty good, actually. And uh, also uh, coming up on Sunday. See, as we're talking right now, the uh, the season is ending for The Walking Dead proper. So uh-huh. the next Sunday... We get Fear of the Walking Dead. They're going to resume season six. Okay. And, uh... This is, this is the one I prefer. Right. This is the uh, Walking Dead flavor I prefer. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I believe, uh... I think we're going to try and get Melissa Merlot on here sometime soon. And, uh, I'm pretty sure she's she might still be a Walking Dead watcher. Well, she's also going to, uh, try to get, uh... Uh, some hard hitting expose on the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City because I'm not fucking doing it. Yeah, you're well, not fucking doing it. Yeah, she can uh, she can give us a. a I'd be curious what her uh, what her favorite Walking Dead franchise uh, contender is. Mine's Fear the Walking Dead. I wonder if she likes original flavor or what. I don't know. It, it well, uh, there. What's the other Walking Dead flavor at uh, World's End or Worlds Beyond? That no one World watched. Beyond, that's it. That no one watched. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Seriously, have Alexa, you, have you heard anything about that show? No, zero buzz whatsoever about that show. And I, other than as a cautionary tale, yeah, no, maybe not that. Really. Yeah. Also <laughs> on Sunday, uh, we have a new series premiering called The Nevers on HBO and HBO Max. It's, it's okay. On, on the downside, this is a series created by Joss Whedon. Ooh. On the upside, he uh, he split like halfway through production for reasons. Doink doink, 
And uh, mm-hmm. now they have a new showrunner. But you got people in here like uh, my cousin Nick Frost and James Norton, <laughs> Olivia Williams, and Laura Donnelly. And it's a story of a group group of women in uh, late Victorian England who uh, have uh, magical and or mutant powers. How is your uh, cousin Nick, by the way? You don't mention him as often. <laughs> oh, we don't we don't speak very often, but he, he's doing fine, doing good. Well, that's good to hear. Even though you guys are. Uh, just basically across the pond from one another, as oh, yeah. it were. Oh yeah. <laughs> I uh, I still think his uh, his best performance uh, is got to be Paul uh, with his uh, man Simon Pegg and uh, you know CGI. Uh, uh, what what's his bucket here? Um, Seth Rogen. Seth is Rogen. A, Seth Rogen is a stoner alien. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that, he must have done some real research on that one. Yeah. Also, uh, uh, also check out Nick Frost in Into the Badlands, the uh, AMC series from a few years ago. It's also a really killer martial arts series, and he uh, he he was pretty funny in that. And that's uh, that's available on Netflix still, right? I don't know. I I think I saw it the other day. I just went, oh yeah. You're still a thing, Netflix. Yeah. Even though you canceled Glow, I will, you know what you did. I will look it up while you uh, give us some uh, sports. Well, I'll be happy to give sports once you hit the music. It's sports with Tommy Milagro. Go team! From the sports desk of the TV Ten Podcast, we deliver to you only the sport of professional wrestling, um, and this is WrestleMania edition. But before we get to that, let's address a couple of things outside of the WWE, who is not a sponsor. So, yeah. Uh, starting with uh, Major League Wrestling, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the franchise I am writing about at slamwrestling.net, which really helps uh, when you have an MBA like I do. Drink. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you are going to pay, folks. Uh, This week they are off for obvious reasons. Uh, They won't have a new show until April 14th. Uh, So this week they're going to have in its place MLW Underground. So these are shows that they used to have way back when in the 2000s. And this is around the time when... ECW basically split up, so some some wrestlers from that uh, time period, as well as some wrestlers from Ring of Honor, made their way onto this onto this uh, fledgling platform here. Uh, some of it was even held in ECW. Really, check it out; it's on YouTube. Also, Impact Wrestling still a thing, still on Access TV, and uh, yes. I, I hear it's moving moving to a different night. I think it's this week, right? Uh, yes. Uh, actually, I think it's going to be next Thursday that they're going to do it. But, uh, yeah, Impact, no longer going to be on Tuesdays. Now, moving to Thursdays going forward. And what was the and, reasoning for that? Uh, just because. That's about as far as I could get with was it. There, and, was there any wrestling competition on Tuesday? Actually, I would say yes, uh, because there's the NWA. And here's the other side of that coin, and this is going to lead to WWE now. NXT is going to be moving to Tuesdays, because before they were on Wednesdays. Oh, there you go. There you go. Okay. Yeah, but because they kept getting killed by this thing called All Elite Wrestling. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, they're they're going to be moving there. Now, that's going to take away some viewers from the NWA, which I'm covering at slamwrestling.net. But thankfully, with my MBA... I will be able to recap all the action, which you can only subscribe for four ninety nine. Not a sponsor. Come on, Billy Cork and Pony Up uh, on Fight TV. So that's a good way to watch that. Or if you decide to skip it this week, not a problem. You can recap. You can uh, just catch up on the replays, or you could just see my recap. Either way, I'm cool. Or you could just give me that money. I'm cool with that too. But now, let's get to the granddaddy of them all, the showcase of the immortals. That is the WrestleMania 37, which is going to be held uh, over in Tampa Bay again. It was supposed to be Hollywood, but, well, 
Yeah, no. Only in Florida are wrestlers considered essential workers. Well, them and oh, well, them and Matt Gates. Yeah. Oh God, did you see how he got savaged by uh, Saturday Night Live the other day? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> we'll come back to that in a second. But uh, here's a uh, here's what the schedule is going to be like for WrestleMania. Uh, and this you can catch at the News and Rumors page at SlamWrestling.net. But it basically breaks down to this. So starting Monday, April 5th, uh, and all this is going to be on Peacock, by the way. It's going to be the best of WWE, best of WrestleMania in the 1990s. Uh, then Raw Talk streaming live at 11 p.m. Eastern. Then Tuesday, April 6th, will be Prime Target. Cole versus O'Reilly, then the best of WWE, best of WrestleMania in the 2000s. Debatable, but let's keep going. Okay. Uh, then uh, also on Tuesday, the WWE Hall of Fame 2020 and 2021 induction ceremonies streaming live at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Now moving on to Wednesday, April 7th. That's going to be. The best of the WWE, best of WrestleMania in the 2010s. Uh, then the WWE's The Bump, streaming live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Then it's going to be a special presentation, NXT TakeOver Night 1 pre-show. And this is NXT TakeOver's Stand and Deliver theme. Uh, that's going to be streaming live at 7 p.m. Eastern. Then they're, uh, uh, then they're going to stream their regular show, streaming live at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, which then follows with, uh, that's going to be on Thursday here. Let me pull this back up here. Um, and, uh, well, first of all, are you exhausted by this at this point, uh, Mr. Frost? Just barely hanging on. Well, that brings us now to Thursday, April 8th, uh, WWE NXT UK Prelude, and this week in the WWE, followed by Special presentation of NXT TakeOver Night 2 pre-show, starting live at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Then NXT TakeOver Night 2, streaming live at 8 p.m. Eastern. Which then leads to Friday, April 9th. It'll be the best of WWE, best of WrestleMania events. Then a 205 Live, streaming live at 10 p.m. Eastern. Which then brings us to Saturday, April 10th. And they got all these shows that are pretty much um, indie shows or development uh, uh, wrestling uh, uh, shows uh, like Evolve 8, ICW, Fight Club 167, WXW, We Love Wrestling number 6, Progress Chapter 108, Talking Smack, WWE Chronicle Edge, WWE's The Bump, streaming live at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, then... It gets to WrestleMania kickoff night one, streaming live at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, followed by WrestleMania night one, streaming live at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and then the WrestleMania night one watch along, streaming live at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. I don't know why that's a thing. Oh, and then um, that actually brings us to the next bit of news here. Sunday, April 11th uh, is going to be Steve Austin's Broken Skull Sessions, and I'm going to come back to why that's a big deal in a second, followed by WWE's The Bump, streaming live at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, then WrestleMania Kickoff Night 2, uh, streaming live at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, followed by WrestleMania Night 2, streaming live at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and there's a WrestleMania Night 2 watch along streaming live at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, why it's repeated twice, I couldn't tell you on that one. Yep. But, okay. So, first of all, are you uh, are you exhausted by all that? So exhausted. I can tell. But here's some other news from the WWE. Um, so, uh, and again, goes back to the whole, uh, things are getting edited for content on the Peacock Network. Remember way, way back, and this is on News and Rumors at SlamWrestling.net, Remember way back when DX made fun of the nation domination by dressing up as them and mocked them on Raw? 
see kids, the nation of domination <laughs> was a, uh, a very militant African American group and DX, uh, they pulled the scrubs essentially. Okay. Well, a video package of that segment has been edited out of the SummerSlam 1998 pay-per-view on Peacock. So, uh, and so that's uh, something you're not going to see anytime soon. And uh, finally this, and this is uh, the big story here. It was announced on WWE.com. Uh, first of all, uh, Mr. Frost, you may want to take a sip of your genius juice right now. Already You'll on understand it. why in a second. Already on it. Oh. It was announced on WWE.com that AEW star Chris Jericho hmm. will be a guest of Stone Cold Steve Austin on his Broken Skull Sessions. And this will air on the WWE Network on April 11th. On a media conference call earlier to, uh, today, this was uh, uh, written on April 11th. On an media conference call uh, to promote next week's NXT TakeOver Stand and Deliver event, Triple H commented on this, noting that people shouldn't make more of this than is warranted. In other words, people shouldn't conclude that Jericho's appearance suggests any type of broader collaboration between the two companies is in play. Quote, we're open for business. Vince has been very open about doing that. What's best for business in WWE and working with Whoever will help with that. It's a funny thing that sometimes people create their own situations in their head. It's not talking to me at all. You'll read comments that somebody will leave and they'll receive a nice call from Vince. Well, people believe what's in their heads when they have no knowledge of it. It's amazing sometimes the fantasy that people have created. Because I am the game. And I am that... De no, he didn't say that last part, but still... <laughs> I would actually believe it if he did say that. So what we're saying is, basically, when we're talking, you're going to be seeing the granddaddy of them all on Peacock. We mean it's the granddaddy of them all hmm. because it's sports. Man, it's sports. So tell me how long ago. Go, team. <sighs> into, yeah. into the Badlands is available on Netflix. I recommend it. Check it out. That is going to be our uh, watch harder, uh, and after that, it's going to be me cutting the cord on Netflix. You know what you did, Netflix. <laughs> now bring back Allison Bree and Mark Marin and everybody else. And uh, I'm gonna we're, we're gonna wrap this up with uh, what to watch harder next week. I'm gonna Ooh. I'm gonna reiterate for I don't know how many times I've said this. Watch Ted Lasso. I've just reminded of this on on Apple TV Plus because Jason Sudeikis just won a SAG Award, Screen Actors Guild Award, for his role in Ted Lasso, best performance by a male actor in a comedy series. Fantastic. Yeah, and other than other than the cast of Schitt's Creek and uh, some some people from The Crown and Jason Bateman from uh ozark the uh mm -hmm. screen actors guild awards uh looking a little less white than usual just saying really uh, yeah you're you're not gonna uh i don't think there's gonna be any trending sag so white hashtags uh <laughs> outstanding performance by cast in the motion picture the trial of the Ch chicago seven and uh, also Chadwick Boseman posthumously won for Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Uh, also, Good. Viola Davis won. Daniel Kaluuya won, who just hosted Saturday Night Live for Judas and the Black Messiah. And uh, oh, and did you see that performance with Saint Le uh, Vincent? By the way, oh yeah, oh yeah, uh, it, it was full on seventies Bowie cosplay, and I'm totally down for it. Honestly, I was getting more Debbie Harry vibes from her. So <laughs> yeah, a little bit of that. A little bit of Prince, a little Debbie Harry, and a whole lot of Bowie going on there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, everybody watch Ted Lasso harder. That's you, what we're trying to say here. Yeah. You, you've you probably bought an Apple product recently. That means you you get the Apple TV Plus subscription free for a year. It's thrown in there. So go ahead and use it. Well, you know, with, uh, with the money and uh, profits we're getting from our podcast and uh, that we've funneled uh, through the Teddy Bear Nanny Cams, kids that's why bots are important i've been able to splurge a little bit and get a new uh, roku so oh really what's interesting oh and here here's what's interesting and i found this out the other day not only 
does the remote contain a, a quick button for Disney Plus? Oh, yeah. But you can get the app for Apple TV Plus. So maybe I might just subscribe. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Which, which model Roku did you get? Uh, uh, what did I get? Um, it, it was is a... It, is it a stick or a box? Oh, it's a, it's a box. It's um, uh, it's like the speaker box, I want to say. Uh, I, I, I remember I looked at it and went, oh, cool. And that was about as much as my thought process went All right. to the subject. That's totally <laughs> fine. So uh, what would you tell the people they should be watching harder this week? Uh, because, uh, uh, because, uh, Mexican issues, uh, Mayans and, uh, oh, oh yeah. it is dark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Super dark. Oh yeah. Shit, shit, um, definitely going down on Mayans. Oh God. Uh, just when I thought I understand what's going on. Whoa. It's going in a whole different, uh, fashion and easy. Yeah. Easy may have had some issues, uh, during this time in Stockton. Uh, just hmm. something to keep an eye on uh, is what I would say. Also, I would uh, I would probably highly recommend Invincible as the other show to watch. Uh, have you been following it quite a bit? Haven't gotten into it yet. It's on uh, Prime Video. I'll be getting to it soon. Okay, I I have to say I definitely like the storyline. It uh, the artwork is spot on with what uh, Ryan Otley used to do and the. Uh, and the script, just to a T, perfect from uh, what uh, uh, Kirk uh, Kirkman used to do, Robert Kirkman yeah. uh, used to do. Uh, definitely a genius, and I, I don't use that word lightly, definitely a genius, but oh, so bloody. <laughs> uh, but uh, I would, uh, those are the two I would say you got to watch a little harder, ladies and gentlemen. All right, cool. Well, we want to thank Sugar House Distillery for the vodka and as well as our other sponsors, which are... That would be our good friends at Outlaw Distillery, Ogden's Own Distillery, the fine purveyors of Madame Paterini Gin, uh, Five Lives of Vodka, which, by the way, Jamie, uh, if you're listening to this, you're welcome, and uh, Port- uh, Porter's Fire, uh, Porter's Rye Whiskey, Porter's peanut butter whiskey oh yes that reminds me uh some new products like uh, some uh some cans of deliciousness which for some reason did not get my way uh but you're enjoying quite a bit uh yeah they're the they're ni- they're nice and convenient uh moscow <laughs> mule in a can and uh vodka soda in a can and and of course uh let's not forget uh the underground and more importantly uh, the pallets and pallets of beer still stockpiled in the fifth, sixth, and now it looks like three quarters of the seventh basement <laughs> of the TV Tan Podcast Studios, uh-huh. courtesy of Bohemian Brewery. Yeah. You're not going to get thirsty anytime soon, are you? Nope. Nope. <laughs> uh, but of course, you got to pair all this up with some fine accoutrements, which you can only get from Boostique in downtown Salt Lake City. Stop by, say hello to Ivy, tell them TV Tan Podcast sent you. But more importantly, no matter the brewery, distillery, or uh, the kiosk that serves uh, such fine beer and uh, booze products, just please let them know TV Tan sent you and wear a mask. Okay? Yeah. Got it? All right, Good. cool. That's it. Uh, Good night, America. Oh, uh, and jiggle that handle because it's time for WrestleMania. Watch. Hey,